Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Uh, we've reached the end. This is the last installment of my Human Rights uh, Lecture Series. Uh, the series is, I, I'm not sure now, but I would imagine it's about 10 or 11 hours. It was about 9 and nine hours or so, uh, not too long ago, last time I checked. So it's it's been pretty substantial, um, and I want to end with a discussion on health. Um, the last discussion was on human rights and um, food, and the idea that food is a human right. And we talked, uh, I talked specifically about the exactly how we come to make sense of the significance of recognizing food security as one of the primary objectives uh, and potential crises for the 21st century. As I said um, earlier. Um, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said of the three crises, um, food and food crises, food security is of the utmost importance. Um, also climate change and the development crisis. But with respect to food crisis, we, we recognize that there is a sense in which as a population is slowly being malnourished, um, it is always the case that you're going to find complications that arrive as a consequence of not having enough to eat and obviously health and nutrition go hand in hand. I want to end the lecture series into um, an analysis into human rights specifically looking at the idea of health and focusing actually quite a bit of time on um, AIDS and the global uh, epidemic that it presents to every human being really on the planet, right? So we have to educate ourselves of the significance of the threat. And we have to make sure that we do our best to um, contribute to a much safer, healthier world. Um, with that being said, uh, let's begin the very last section of the Human Rights Lecture. Keep in mind that you can access the notes. All you have to do is click the banner ad that'll pop up or the link in the description field. It'll take you to the PDF download the PDF, follow along, and uh, we'll be good. Um, also, again, I missed quite, you know, I did a lot. The fact that we have, you know, 11, 12 hours worth of lecture up, consecutive hours of, of lecture into human rights, I think is a huge, you know, it is a huge comment. It, it's not, I think it is a huge comp uh, contribution. It is a huge contribution to sort of global education. But there's, there's so much more that can be done, right? Uh, and there's so much more that needs to be done which is why uh, I, I'm going to, in the next few months, I'm going to continue with my Nietzsche series and other things that I'm sort of interested in, but I'm going to come back to the human rights and, and do a whole new set of human rights topics because I'm obviously fascinated by this stuff. I'm very passionate about it, about it and I, I feel that we all have, as I said in my um, kinetic typography video on the techno-morality of the underclass, we have an obligation to contribute to information, right? The quote-unquote uh, information gods, <laughs> which are humongous computers that will eventually be built. Um, they consume information. That's what they'll do. Their sole purpose will be to eat information. And my sort of role in the global development of super computers is to give them more information than they can possibly handle. I mean, I know they can handle more than I can possibly put out there. But if they're going to be eating information, and if information is going to make them better and stronger and smarter, then I'm going to do my bit to make sure that the information gods get their, their nourishment, right? So I got to put a lot of info out. And with that being said, you know, this, you know, it was a good series. It was a really good series. I went through it quickly. Um, I was able to shoot it pretty fast. I was able to upload it pretty fast. Taking the notes wasn't too long. Uh, and it's a substantial, it's a substantial series, it's 12, uh, you know, 11 to 12 hours. Um, so again, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing my part and I think, I think as uh, we all share in just being aware, just the fact, just the mere fact that you've watched the video and now you have an understanding of sort of the consequence that global capitalism and emerging market demands place on um, farmers to transform their crop, crops from, you know, subsistence crops to cash crops and the implication that that has, that's great knowledge to have. That's great knowledge to have, but it's just a start, right? I'm not here to tell you that my information is the end all be all. It's just a start, right? Now it's your, it's your responsibility to go out and do something with that information that you got. 
Okay. So with that, let's begin this uh, last section of human rights, which is uh, health. So this is human rights. And we're in section 8. And we're going to talk about health. Alright. Um, specifically, we're talking about Paul Hunt's article. It's called The Right to Health, Key Objectives, Themes, and Interventions. It covers page 201 to 209 in the text. 201 through 209. And obviously, we're going to be looking at um, health as human right. So, let's define health first. What, what exactly is it? What is health? The definition that was given is the following, quote, the World Health Organization defines health as, quote, a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Very solid definition, right? The first recognition is that the definition of health is constructed in the affirmative. It's the possession of things. One of the biggest, the biggest mistakes that young scholars and graduate students make is they attempt to define something in terms of its negation. They attempt to say that health is an absence of disease, an absence of sickness, doesn't tell me what it is. It tells me what it's not. What's solid about this definition is that it gives us both, right? It says a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, right? So physically I'm well. Socially, I'm well, I'm integrated, I have friends, I have a network, it can be virtual friends, you know, virtual friends count as well. Uh, you have friends that you integrate with, and mentally, psychologically, you're, you're strong, right? And it's not just the absence of disease or infirmity, right? So we're looking at the completion of those characteristics, physical, mental, and social well-being. Okay, so that's what health is. Um, let's look at four jurisprudential elements, right? Okay, so four jurisprudential um, elements. The first is the following, quote, the right to health includes, but goes beyond the right to health care, right? So when we're talking about health, the right to health includes, meaning that health care is a subset, right? This is what that's saying, right? It says, quote, the right to health includes, but goes beyond the right to health care. So that health care is a subset to health. It's just one aspect of health. If we're talking about health, it's not simply the case that all we're talking about are is health care. Right? This is sort of the administration of services to facilitate in increasing the health within a population. But as we saw before, this notion of health in general includes sort of the holistic completion of those three factors that we talked about. Physical health, social health, psychological, mental health. Okay, so that's the first thing, is that healthcare is a set within health. So when we're talking about health, it's more than just healthcare. Number two, um, the right to health is an inclusive right. And this is very, very important, right? The right to health is an inclusive right. And the question, obviously, is what do we mean by inclusive right, right? An inclusive right includes the, quote, underlying detriments of health. That is, those things that will lead one to get sick, right? So when we're talking about the inclusive right, as we've seen uh, in the quote, it's the underlying detriments to health. And those things are the things that will um, lead one to get sick. So the example is access to safe and portable water and adequate sanitation, right? Inclusive, right? We need to make sure, as I said in the last series, that individuals within a population have access to clean drinking water. Um, it's not only the case that they have access to clean drinking water that's important, but the accessibility is itself important, right? Clean drinking water that's 20 miles away presents a problem. Clean, uh, clean drinking water that's 20 miles away on a road that is completely infested with rebels um, is even more of a problem. And this is a dilemma that many, many people know all too often, right? So um, with respect to the rights, this right is an inclusive right. 
and what we want to do 